Hello, this is Shane Gibson with Racken, and today I'm going to give you a quick video demo of installing VMware ESXi product on a VirtualBox uh, VM. We're going to start out uh, by kicking this process off, and then I'll explain a little bit about what's going on, since there's an awful lot, lot of time that it takes to do the installation. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to the bulk actions screen. We're going to kick the machine off into the ESXi 670 update 1 install workflow. And due to a little bug in VirtualBox, we're going to power this uh, VM off and then restart it so it kicks correctly. So there we go. We have the loading ESXi 670U1 installer. All right, in the background, let's take a look at what happened. Uh, we kicked the workflow off. Uh, the, and we also have on this specific machine, Pixie Client 1, we have a profile set. Uh, this profile is called VMware Settings, which has a few parameters that will affect some of the installation process dis, uh, choices. Specifically, the shell, local shell, remote are set to true. So the ESXi uh, local shell and the SSH remote shell will be enabled uh, post-provisioning uh, during first boot. Uh, we've also specified skip tools, which installs the uh, client tools uh, module. Um, because we're doing sort of a demonstration here, the client tools module is about half of the actual ESXi full payload. That'll help reduce the install cycle time just a little bit. Uh, these settings are used within templates, so if we take a look at the templates, there are a number of templates related to the ESXi 7.0. Uh, first and foremost is the boot template for this uh, instance, which defines the Pixie boot process and all of the various modules that are loaded. Uh, we can actually see the tools module, if I can find that here. So here's the, if the uh, skip tools, yeah, well, that didn't work out so nicely, did it? There we go. You can see here if the skip tools is set to false, uh, which is the default setting, then it'll inject the tools.t00 module. That's how that works. Uh, we have a couple other things uh, we're not using right now. The serial console parameter is not set, so we're not using that. Uh, one of the other templates that uh, it then kicks off and uses is the uh, Python 3 uh, kickstart based template and that is uh, ESXi, let me see here, follow, install Pi3 Kickstart. Uh, so this is the Kickstart which is fed to the machine during the Pixie process and defines all the, the installation parameters. So an example here is we can set the ESXi license as a parameter. The license will be applied to the machine. Uh, we can change the root password as well. Uh, and we can define where it's going to be installed to. We could do some fancy stuff with network configuration settings. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and let it pick up settings from DHCP. Uh, that's fine. And then in the uh, pre-interpreter uh, uh, for post-boot, we are going to do the Python 3 uh, patch operation back to the DRP endpoint, which allows us to signal to the DRP endpoint that the installation process is completed successfully. And then next it'll uh, render the EXI, ESXi first boot, boot template, and that's where a lot more of the magic starts to happen. So if we take a look at the ESXi uh, first boot template here, We'll see that on first boot, uh, we're going to just sleep for a, minute, a few minutes, let uh, or seconds, and let the uh, host service uh, host D come up successfully. Now we're going to take a look at those uh, parameters. So we had seen those earlier. ESXi shell local. If that's set, we're going to run the vim command to set the shell, uh, and then we're going to uh, suppress shell warning messages on that. And then if we do the SSH uh, remote shell as well, we'll enable the SSH uh, and then similarly suppress the warning on that. And uh, if we have any SSH uh, keys specified, our, our authorized keys file, so that's the SSH keys root authorized keys, we'll inject the SSH keys for remote SSH access to that. And we do have that set on this machine uh, as part of the global global profile. So if we go to the profiles and global, <clears throat> we'll see that access keys is set here. And I have a, my public uh, key here, which should be injected once the installation is complete on the machine. You'll see that we uh, support currently out of the box seven different 
versions of ESXi. We support from 55U3B to 670U1. Excuse me. It's easy to add additional versions, and we can also uh, add vendor-specific uh, ISO images so we can support specific vendor hardware with specific modules in them. Those can very easily be added in. Additionally, uh, there's an awful lot of work that can be done to extend templates to do much more advanced first boot things, for example, setting up networking, etc. In the background, we have uh, ESXi is doing its work here. We'll pause for a moment and let this finish up, and we'll be back in just a minute. OK, ESXi just finished installation and should boot up uh, right now. And after it gets done with the booting, uh, we'll check back in again. Okay, ESXi has booted up successfully and we see that it's uh, installed at 192.168.8.100 and if we take a look at our machines here, that matches here as well, 192.168.100 is the DHCP service address assigned to the machine and as we saw previously, uh, the SSH key for myself had been added in in the uh, first boot process. So if we jump over to that machine uh, and log into it, we should be able to log in uh, without requesting password. So there we go. We've logged into the host. It's completed the installation, and we are done.